So obviously the first question is the obvious one, but it is the important one. How did this come about, Alana? What was your inspiration for the story in the screenplay? Yeah, um, at the time that I started writing this, I was thinking a lot about this type of relationship and um, how it can be really difficult to put it into words and to describe what it feels like. And it just felt to me like something that would if you, if you could execute it properly, could translate to the screen really well and it could feel like a culmination over the course of the film um, to land the audience with an understanding of what this character is going through. So, you know, it was a bit of a challenge to myself to do that. Um, and hopefully it, uh, it paid off. <laughs> well, well, to understand what the character is going through is something that you need to really be absorbed by the film for the duration of the film because it's not exactly clear. It is not, it's not there in the first like five or 10 pages. So Anna, when you read the screenplay for the first time, what was that journey like for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you executed that very beautifully that, with that intention because I, I think that's, it is a really difficult thing to describe and it's um, difficult to describe to other people and equally, if not more difficult to identify in yourself, like when it's happening. So, um, I think that Alana really did a beautiful job of creating the atmosphere. And, um, there's something about this film that I, I struggle to, to say like what genre it is. I usually just say it's a drama, but there's part of it where I'm like, it's a horror film, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, and Alana really created that world and that tone and that atmosphere of, of like a horror film where there's this impending dread that hangs over everything because that's the experience. And you said something to me actually, um, maybe 10 minutes ago that you're not the first person to say this, that, um, people have seen the film and said, um, you know, for like half the movie, I wasn't really sure what was going on. I wasn't sure if there was something wrong with Alice. I wasn't sure if it was in her head. And um, I, I don't know if we ever put it into those words when we were making the film, but like that is very much the intention to give you the experience of being in this kind of state. And when you're in that state, you are very much questioning, is there something wrong with me? Do I have a problem? Is it all in my head? And you're longing for some sort of evidence really one way or the other. And so often it's like, it, it's so unclear. And, um, and there was a real, you know, I think you and I went through different phases with the movie where it was like, I think there were people who thought it would be easier, better, whatever, simpler to just have him throw her against a wall just once, you know, just so that it was like clear, he's the bad guy and uh, yeah. the whole audience can relax and go, okay, great, he's a bad guy and we all agree and we're all on the same page. And I didn't see the point in doing that because I didn't want to make a movie that I would have seen and thought, oh, okay, so it's not that bad, you know, because th that's every movie I've ever seen about abuse mm -hmm. was something that I would watch and go like, well, it's, it's, that's not happening, so I guess I'm fine. And I wanted this to just be like, it's not fine. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have to push you into a wall for it to not be fine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, while you were writing the screenplay, you know, there are certain tropes or, or cliches that go along with, with movies or television shows or television movies about abusive relationships. Uh, this is not the burning bed, not by a long shot. Um, in fact, I mean, going on the point of your of, of saying, like, we don't really know, like, what's going on with Alice. Like, the, does she need help? Uh, she's pulling out her hair. And, and so while you were writing the screenplay, like, how... How did you avoid those tropes? So what were the conversations you had with the director to, to ensure that we would keep people guessing up until almost like the third act? Yeah, I mean, I, I always had the intention that our understanding of Simon would evolve um, and that, yeah, he would only fully come into clarity in the third act. Um, not, that, not to say that it was really easy to do that. <laughs> it definitely took some work. Um, it was really important to me that it, it was never physical. It was, it was all emotional. And so that it was really about, you know, what this was doing to Alice internally. Um, and the, the flashes that occur in the movie, that was a huge uh, 
issue, I guess, that we had to work through is just how much we were showing. And um, Mary, our director, was like really amazing and sort of wanting to do like shoot them all different ways so you know Simon would say the same thing but maybe he'd say it three different ways and we all felt like it's gonna kind of it, we're gonna have to see how it plays ultimately um in the edit to really find like what's the right level of information to be revealing at what stage and what's going on with Alice that triggers like that exact kind of flash in her mind. Um, so that was, script wise, was really challenging to get those, you know, you want them on the page, but you also know it's gonna be a little bit in flux during filming and in the edit. What made Mary and I the, the perfect person to direct this film? Like what were the conversations that y'all have with her about her approach to capture like what, what was on the page? Mary, right from the beginning, like I, she totally saw it and um, she has such a sensitivity and such like a sh just like artful way of looking she's at things. She's very calming. Like very, she's very, she's very poetic. Soothing, yeah. That's rare, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like you never, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe the producers or I don't know, but for me, she never was, you know, like a, a frenetic presence. She always, you know, she was very calm and she was also very, um, like specific and, generous in her feedback to me when I was writing and our relationship felt really like supportive um, so that I understood what she needed from me and you know she always gave me the chance to like make a change if we needed to make a change rather than just be like oh, I'll just do it myself yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I really as a writer you know that's that's huge I really appreciate it your approach to Alice what were your points of connection like how did you like get the character and make sure you like were were on the path I was drawn to the script because I was coming out of a very similar relationship um like very very recently after when I got the film the script um in fact like the first time that I met with Mary I was like you know, if the movie was shooting in a month like I it wouldn't be appropriate for me to do it like I wouldn't be it would be not healthy for me to do it. Um, but I think we had like six months or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, yeah, it was scary, but it, it also felt like, you know, there were so many things in the screenplay that were just like crushingly, you know, specifically relatable. Um, like I remember reading that line, um, you know, when she loses the earring, I can't do another thing wrong. Yeah, yeah. And just being like, Jesus Christ. Um, but then there were other things where that was not my experience at all, you know, and I knew that different things would resonate with different people. Um, and I thought that, um, yeah, again, that Alana had just really captured um, that oppressive, like suffocating atmosphere so well. And, um, and I kind of knew, um, like, because Mary is one of the only people, which I think is right, like because she's the director and she's one of the only people who hasn't been in a relationship like this, that she would kind of be in the watchtower, like making sure that nobody's story got too hyper specific. Yeah. But there were also things where like, I think it was like day one or two, they wanted to steal this shot of me in the hammock, um, just sort of staring into space. And Mary was like, oh, I think you should maybe be reading a book. And I was like, oh, I could, I should absolutely take the book because I would go out to the hammock with the intention of reading the book. Yeah. But my brain can't actually focus on more than like a paragraph. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. It's kind of not, I mean, it's kind of funny, like, you know, now that it's been like two years, but <laughs> yeah, um, no. it, you know, at the time it's like to be in that constant state of like fight or flight where all all I can do is try to figure out like, what do I do? How am I better? How, I just need to work on my communication skills. <laughs> um, I just, you know, the only thing I could read was self-help and even that was like, you know, obsessive, like highlighter or pencil, you know? Um, so like just little things like that, like, oh, I know exactly that I would want to go out to the hammock to read, but that I would just sort of hold it against my chest and like stare into the middle distance was just sort of innately there. Sure. sure. Um, and, uh, I, I think that kind of gave me the freedom and just the kind of poetic nature of the script gave me the freedom to not hold on to these like hyper specific kind of tools that I tend to reach to um, as a performer and um, meant that I could kind of shed a lot of the armor that, by the way, that I, 
I'm proud that I've um, developed over the years as an actor. Um, I really always wanted to be the kind of performer who, um, you know, was kind of in a dance with the camera operator and, you know, knew how to help the edit and um, could be the kind of filmmaker actor, you know? Yep, yep. And this was actually something where I didn't want to think about any of those kind of tools and um, just be as present as possible. So it was really vulnerable and unnerving, but it was really rewarding. What's the takeaway that you hope, especially after writing the screenplay, that you hope people take away from the film? I think I, I always just hope to make someone who watches it feel something. Like, I think my greatest hope as a writer is just like, that someone will feel moved by something that I've written. Yep. Um, so that, um, I think sort of specifically to the film, you know, what we've talking, what we've been talking about is the idea that, you know, this is enough and it matters and it might be really hard to describe, but that doesn't mean that it's not true and that it didn't happen and that it doesn't affect you. So I would just, just a feeling of, of, yeah, that it, that it's real and it matters. Certainly, and, and Anna, especially for you, because you related, uh, what do you hope people take from the film? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's beautifully put, that it's real and it matters. Um, you know, I think that there, every now and then I'll do an, an interview and someone will, will be like, well, yeah, you know, like she's gotta get out of there like because it could get physical. And even that I, I slightly object to yeah. because it's like, it it even the threat that something could become physical, like, I, I don't think I really ever worried about that, but it it was abusive and I deserved to leave, yeah. you know? So it's like almost important to say like, just this yeah. is enough and you deserve better and you deserve to leave and take care of yourself mm -hmm. and that it doesn't have to be like before it gets physical or in case it gets yeah, physical. Absolutely. Um, so I thought that your exploration of that was really amazing. Well, congratulations, and thank you, everyone, for joining us for this screening and conversation of Alice Daring. Please spread the word about the movie. Thank you both for this amazing thank conversation. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>